Hi, I'm Jacob Badger, and you may be wondering why I'm sitting on the floor. The answer to that is because I want to start this TED Talk off with a metaphor. For this metaphor, I will need two volunteers. One is my business associate here, Tico, and the second is a breadstick from Olive Garden. Now in this metaphor, the breadstick will represent the human population and the survival of the human race, and Tico here will represent global warming and pollution. Let's see what happens. That was pretty harsh. As you can see, Tico has absolutely no regard for the well-being of mankind. But luckily there are things we can do and steps we can take to prevent a situation similar to what we just witnessed. Um, one of these solutions being the shifting our focus in order to phase out gas-powered cars and have a primarily electric-based automobile industry. Before I dive into that, I want to tell you a little bit more about myself. Um, my dad and grandpa, to this day, are uh, big car guys. They love working on cars, fixing cars, uh, making modifications to cars, and that's definitely been passed down, passed down to me as well. Uh, as a kid, I used to love going to Bandemir and watching the cars drag and at one time I even got to go back in the garages and talk with some of the guys and uh, kind of get to see the ins and outs of some of those super fast funny cars. Uh, so my sophomore year of high school I decided to take an auto mechanics class to pursue this interest a little more uh, and find out some more about uh, the ins and outs of automobiles. Uh, and so after a full semester in this class, I could successfully change a tire and switch out oil, which as far as hands-on knowledge goes, wasn't what I was expecting from the class, but it did however teach me uh, a, a lot of the complexities of the cars and how uh, incredibly difficult it is to make all these moving parts come together uh, in order to allow these super heavy uh, metal machines to travel at such high velocities. Uh, and around the same time, one thing that also surprised me, along with the uh, intricacies of cars, was I heard about a man who I'd never heard before, Elon Musk, who um, decided to take one of his electric cars, uh, strap it to a rocket, and launch it into space. And up to this point, I'd, I'd known a little bit about electric cars, and I've heard of Priuses and hybrid cars here and there. But I'd never really heard of a full electric car, and so especially with my newfound knowledge of how complex gas-powered cars were, uh, it didn't really even seem possible to me that uh, someone could make an efficient uh, electric car run as efficiently as a gas-powered car. Now because of this, and my lack of knowledge about Elon Musk up to this point, I assumed that this was uh, mainly a publicity stunt and just Elon Musk was a super rich guy. and. Uh, just decided to launch a car into space, because why not? That's pretty sick. Uh, but after some more research, uh, I found out that it was more of an advertisement than anything else uh, for his electric car, and also SpaceX, obviously. But now when you look around, you have you see electric cars on every block, and uh, Teslas are in uh, countless households today. And it's, and it's just, uh, you see many of these big, uh, car companies shifting their focus from gas-powered cars towards electric-powered cars as it is just kind of the wave of the future as it's uh, a lot more environmentally conscious um, and affordable as well. Greenhouse gas emissions have been a prominent factor for global warming for a long time now and as you can see by this chart there are five major contributors to this, these emissions uh, agriculture, commercial and residential, industry, electrical and transportation and transportation being the largest of these contributors, making up uh, approximately 28% of greenhouse gas emissions. And now increasing the production of electric cars would finally give us a solution to help reduce the immense amount of harmful gases produced by these cars. Uh, the US Department of Energy says that calculating this type of emission is complex, but that electric cars produce fewer lifetime emissions than traditional vehicles because they don't rely on gas. Uh, phasing out electric cars uh, from in dealerships across the world would therefore uh, begin to help us maintain our environment and uh, cut back on a lot of the harmful things that are being caused by these gas-powered cars. Now I can still remember one of the first times that I really realized firsthand the effects of these greenhouse gases. Uh, it was when I was driving with my family to downtown Denver and as we approached the city I saw this heavy cloud over uh, Denver and at first I thought it was just a regular cloud um, but as we kind of approached the city 
and uh, I was able to look at the cloud hovering over Denver and the clouds of where we just came from, I realized that it was actually smog from the pollution given off by the city. And I mean, when I saw this, I was, I was scared and worried because I'd never really seen firsthand the consequences of the actions of mankind, uh, just as far as greenhouse gas emissions and uh, global warming and pollution and th things like that go. Uh, and ironically enough, the reason we were going to downtown Denver was we were going to the, nat uh, the Museum of Nature and Science to see a National Geographic movie uh, about the effects of global warming. And one of the big topics they focused on was uh, like in the South Pole, the ice caps, how the ice caps were affected uh, from global warming. And uh, as far as the, how the ice caps affect us, I mean, the majority of our fresh water comes from ice caps. Uh, and because of global warming, uh, the ice caps are melting. And so this presents a big problem, not only for us, but also for many of the animals who live in these ice caps, such as polar bears, are going extinct because their habitats are being ruined uh, by our actions and uh, the pollution that we're giving off and melting the ice caps. So this movie, along with uh, my experience seeing the smog over Denver, really uh, caused me to want to make a change in uh, how we go about our uh, production of cars uh, in order to help preserve the environment, in order to not only preserve our lives, but the lives of uh, animals that are living on the planet with us. And so, now obviously there's still a lot of work to be done before electric cars can completely overtake gas-powered cars. Um, for example, the price, the cost right now, which is soon going to be more reasonable as many uh, well-known car brands are falling in the footsteps of Tesla and shifting their focus from gas-powered cars to electric-powered cars. Uh, but if you're buying an affordable electric car, there's a chance that you're getting cars uh, with a battery range of just 120 to 150 miles, while most gas-powered vehicles average around 300 miles on a full tank. And uh, Mankind has been perfecting gas-powered cars for nearly 150 years, so the fact that electric electric cars uh, have become so efficient in just really the past couple years uh, is extremely impressive. Um, additionally, the journey of making electric cars as efficient and one day more efficient than gas-powered cars uh, would be a global initiative. And we're on a mission to collectively help and preserve the planet and coming together to make the world a better place is always a good collective goal. Uh, accomplishing this goal would bring countries together while at the same time could possibly allow for a time period similar to the arms race in which we'll see major technological advancements and improvements to the global economy uh, due to the competitive nature of each country and its desire to do its part uh, to save the environment. Now, unfortunately, I can't tell any of you exactly what to do, but uh, I do encourage you that next time you're going card car shopping and you're at a dealership, uh, take a stroll over to the electric car section and uh, check those out um, because we need to, as a, we're, as a community, uh, not only in our country but worldwide as well, uh, work towards phasing out gas-powered cars and shifting towards primarily electric-powered cars in order to help preserve our environment uh, for the prolongation of our lives and the lives of animals that live on this planet with us. And if we all work together collectively on this goal, then we can avoid a situation similar to Tico absolutely devouring that breadstick. That's all I have. Thanks. Have a good night.